Hello there, how's it going today? Um, I want to answer one simple and basic and important question, which is can I replace Photoshop's functionality with free and open source programs? Can I, you know, get everything that I get out of Photoshop with free and open source programs? Um, and by the end of this video, I hope to inform you as well if you will be able to or not. Um, and, you know, answer that and give you some more info to make a better choice if you are thinking about moving away from Photoshop. Um, because, of course, Photoshop is pretty expensive. 20 bucks a month, 60 bucks, bucks a month for all of the Creative Cloud apps. Um, especially if you are, you know, on Linux and coming from a free and open source perspective. Uh, this is, you know, pretty crazy. Uh, but the problem is Photoshop is pretty much the industry standard uh, just because it has so many features. And even if it does have a few drawbacks here and there, uh, it really is a good program. You know, if you're doing any sort of photo editing, photo manipulation, uh, graphic design, illustration, it really has it all for you. Um, so, you know, there's a reason why everybody likes Photoshop so much. Um, now, I will just get this out of the way if you're furiously typing a comment about selling the high seas, if you know what I mean. Um, that's kind of not the point of this video. While I do acknowledge that, um, I do want to see if the free and open source alternatives actually work here. Um, and I'm going to go through each of these as objectively as possible um, from the point of view of somebody who actually uses these programs. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not here to shill for Linux or anything like that, because while I do use Linux, um, I, I do kind of want to find programs that actually have all the features you need because it's worthless to kind of say, oh, just go use, you know, XYZ and then it just doesn't even have the features you need. So like, come on, right? Anyways, first of all, I want to start with Darktable here, uh, which is pretty much a clone of Lightroom Classic. Um, I daily drive this program and this is the one program on this list that I genuinely would 100% recommend. Uh, you can get it on Mac and Windows as well if you wanted, or of course, if you're on Linux, uh, it's in the AUR. Uh, you could get the app image or the source if you wanted as well. I'm sure Debian has it in repos somewhere. Um, but this is pretty much just a clone of Lightroom Classic. If I open it up here, you'll see we start out with like the library view. I can do all sorts of image, uh, you know, collection editing, tagging, uh, you know, favoriting, uh, metadata editing, uh, exporting as needed. I can go ahead and open up an image here and we'll have pretty much all of the stuff you'd expect, you know, everything from color correction to, you know, sharpening, blurring, cropping, uh, you know, noise, denoise, uh, I can, I can export it pretty much just everything you would need, right? Um, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy, but just a solid program that actually does its job. Um, so I would, and of course you'll recognize this, this, uh, view here from Lightroom. Uh, this pretty much just looks like Lightroom classic. Um, it does its job. It's a really solid program. So if you use Photoshop for anything, you know, raw image related, this is the program for you. This will probably replace Photoshop if you are just using Photoshop for raw image processing. Uh, second of all, we have Krita, uh, which is actually a very old program. Uh, it's a KDE program and it is for digital art uh, illustration painting. Um, I personally don't do any of that stuff, so I can't, you know, swear by it in terms of actually using it. Uh, however, a lot of people do like it and, you know, out of the box, it looks pretty good. Uh, if I just open it up here, you'll see it's just got like um, all of all of the stuff you would need for digital painting. You know, it's got brushes, it's got shape tools, I don't know, you know, filters. Uh, you can do scripts as well. Pretty much everything in this program is geared towards illustration, digital art, digital painting. Um, feel free to tell me in the comments whether you like this program or not, or if there's another alternative that's better. Uh, but for the purpose of digital illustration, this was pretty much the best program I could find. And uh, I think this is genuinely held up there as a pretty good program, as in, you know, it's as good as Photoshop if you are using Photoshop for, you know, illustration, digital art. Anyways, the last one I want to go over, and this is going to be where it gets a little bit controversial, is GIMP. Uh, now, I'm going to sway away from the, like, Linux party line here. A lot of people on Linux really like GIMP. Uh, I don't. Uh, it's really not great out of the box, and you can try to impl improve it with plugins, but really it is missing a lot of features compared to Photoshop, and as it stands right now, is not a viable Photoshop alternative. So I'm gonna kind of go through these features and talk about what I like and what I don't like. 
um, and what I think you can manage to use if you are trying to move away from Photoshop, whether this is going to work for you or not, you know? So, um, first of all, you can get the uh, Photo GIMP patch here, which is just going to make GIMP behave a little bit more like Photoshop. It uh, redoes the menus a little bit, uh, it changes the shortcuts, uh, and it adds some Python scripts to add some features back that Photoshop has, GIMP doesn't. Uh, to install this, you'll essentially just want to copy all of the files from this directory here into your GIMP configuration directory. So if I just go into uh, config GIMP and then 2.10 here, uh, this is where I'm going to want to stick the uh, folder from this repo. Uh, so just copy that all in. And also if you were going to get extended plugins for GIMP, so Python scripts, those would go in the plugins directory plug-ins here. Um, so that is how to install that and how to install plugins. We also have plugins on the AUR here as well. Um, so for example, a layer effects plugin, which I will talk about in a little bit, there's some more plugins on the AUR or you can browse, you know, GitHub for plugins, etc. And finally, there are also user scripts all around the internet for GIMP. Um, this is pretty similar to Photoshop scripts. If you know about, you know, those JSX scripts, uh, these are just Python scripts, however, uh, but um, these might have like a feature here and there if you're you know in GIMP and really missing a feature this you might be able to find a script that does it for you so it's worth mentioning it I'll, I'll link this repo in the description uh, and if I can find anything else that looks good I'll link that too um, but let's go ahead and boot up GIMP here to see how it looks uh, with photo GIMP of course I have read on the menus a bit myself as well just in the configuration GIMP has pretty extensive configuration actually so I have done my best to make it look like Photoshop. Just if, you know, you're used to having things in a certain place, you know, the tools all lined up on the side there. Um, I will say quickly for raw image editing, if I were to move in a raw image from uh, just a CR2 here, I really don't like how GIMP handles this. Um, I just use Darktable, honestly. So if you're doing raw image editing at all, just really go with Darktable. GIMP does not do it well. Um, However, if I just try to make a new document here, right, I'm going to look at uh, layer effects a little bit. So if I just type in some text, well, first of all, the, the one thing I do want to point out, uh, I can, you know, do basic stuff like, you know, change, change the color, uh, change the font if I wanted to, right? Basic, basic stuff there. If I go ahead and commit that text, though, and I want to then resize this, right? Okay, well that will resize, but now it rasterizes it, so I can't go back and edit that text, uh, which is really annoying and unfortunate. So to resize it properly, I have to go through and edit the uh, pixel of that text, which if you're coming from Photoshop, then you know how annoying that is, especially if you're doing any sort of graphic design where you do need to be doing text a lot. Um, so that, that kind of sucks, but whatever, it gets the job done right. Well. Now for the layer effects, um, if you're doing anything like making YouTube thumbnails, right, you're probably very used to layer effects in, in Photoshop. Uh, and all right, so if I do this layer effect here, which it has pretty much all the options Photoshop has, but when I go to uh, press OK here, you'll see, OK, it's literally going through and doing a script to do this layer effect. Now, for reference, if you don't know, in Photoshop, this takes a few milliseconds and you'll have like a live preview and everything. So this is like the, it's a workaround that it works. Yes, it works. And of course, you know, now I can't go back and, and edit the text here, um, which in Photoshop, you can go back and live edit the text with the effect on it. So like, yes, in a worst case scenario, you could get by with this, but if your workflow is heavy on text editing, especially with effects, you're probably gonna be very annoyed with this. Um, now, something that I was able to get working in GIMP that is a staple feature of Photoshop is guide snapping. So in Photoshop, if I were to just take this and move it around, it would automatically snap to guides when I brought it nearby. So like a center guide here, or if I had other layers I was trying to align it with, it would show me the guide alignment there. Well, um, you can use guides. If I go to image and guides and presets on the image, uh, these are presets I downloaded. So just Python scripts uh, from that repository I showed actually, so I could toggle on a centered guide and now I could go and um, put this uh, snap it to the guide there um, and I could toggle on and off that guide with a shortcut so that works well enough once you set it up that's that's an okay feature there uh, the next thing I want to talk about uh, I actually am gonna 
copy in this um, image here from the uh, photo gimp uh, repo here just to use it as an example so i can copy in that just fine uh i can you know move it around i could toggle on the guys to center it if i wanted to there uh that's that's good enough right uh i can do also uh layer uh blending here as you normally would in uh, photoshop and there's actually even more options so that's a plus to gimp uh it's actually got even more options than photoshop for blend modes so that's nice um however if i wanted to first of all, do a Gaussian blur on this, right? I can go ahead and do that, that works, but I don't get the nice blur menu that I get in Photoshop. I think, well, actually Gaussian blur in Photoshop is just, it's gonna be a similar menu to that, but GIMP does not have that um, full blur, uh, you know, options menu. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, where it's like, um, it opens up a new window and you can set the points and you can like toggle exactly the um, settings of the blur. You don't have that in GIMP by default. Um, if you do happen to know of a plugin for that, let me know. Um, maybe there's a plugin that does that. Um, anyways, on to selection. Uh, you know, Magic Wand or Fuzzy Select, whatever you want to call it, works fine pretty much. It's just pretty much the same as Photoshop. You can do feathering, etc. Um, if you do rely on magnetic lasso a lot or like polygonal lasso, lasso from Photoshop, you might be a little bit disappointed with these options. They can probably get the job done, but they're really not as good as Photoshop in my opinion. So that just note that for that. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to look at here is just the uh, color uh, balance or levels or any editing like that. Uh, if you know in Photoshop, you'll open adjustment and it'll uh, make a new layer for you. So that way you're not editing directly on the layer you're on. So, um, but if I were to, you know, open up a hue saturation here for this layer, it's just going to edit directly on that layer, which um, is kind of annoying just because if I want to try out a few different like, um, you know, temperature, color temperatures or whatever, change levels a bit, a few different times, something that I do often in Photoshop with photo editing is like, you know, do three different options for the levels or whatever and kind of, you know, toggle them on and off and see what looks best, right? So to do that here, you could do that, but you'd have to duplicate the layer and then edit each layer, which is like, okay, yes, it gets the job done, but it's sort of a annoying workaround there. And honestly, that sort of sums up my feeling about GIMP. In general, you can get the job done, but it usually takes a little bit longer and requires a workaround. Um, and if you're trying to maintain a fast paced workflow for either image editing or graphic design or whatever, um, this probably is not gonna cut it for you. However, uh, since I, I did want to kind of go through all three of the programs I looked at today, just because if you are using Photoshop, you know, just for raw images and basic correction, uh, or if you're using Photoshop for illustration and digital painting, uh, you might well be able to get away with an alternative. Um, and maybe if the features you need are present in GIMP and you can get everything working for you, you might be able to get away with GIMP. Um, but as it stands, I do not think GIMP is a fully fledged replacement for Photoshop. Uh, I really do hope that it can become that in a few years. I mean, I, that would be nice. Uh, I think we would all, you know, prefer a free and open source al alternative to Photoshop that actually had all the features uh, that one uses in Photoshop. But as it stands right now, it's, it's really not there yet, in my opinion. So um, hope this video kind of gave you a little bit more context as to what your options are and you kind of learn if you can move away from Photoshop or not. Um, if you have anything to share about, you know, GIMP plugins or other programs that are good alternatives, uh, let me know in the comments. Obviously, there's plenty of other programs I didn't go through, but I think these are some of the, some of the main ones that get brought up when talking about Photoshop alternatives. Um, yeah, hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Peace. Have a good evening.